We are here at the new Mayfair venue of Signature African Art to speak to the Nigerian artist Oluwole Omofemi about his current exhibition, The Way We Were, focusing on the importance of hair amongst black communities. Can you tell me a bit about the significance of hair, both to you personally and also as part of your culture and as part of your work? Hair has always been a subject uh, that I use as a metaphor to, to explain things around me. Because the Afro is, you know, is part of your identity. It's part of what makes you different. It's part of, it's, I can also say it's, it's part of your belief mm -hmm. as individuals. You know, you can't take your belief from who you are. While I was growing up, my, father, my grandfather had this big Afro. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's over 90 now. <laughs> it's still there. So, he, he explained some things about the Afro and the significance of the Afro to me then, and which I decided to choose as a subject to, to talk about and to pick it up as a, as a major subject for me. But the subjects in your paintings, if I'm right, they're all female. Is there a reason for that? One of the major reasons why I decided to paint mostly women is uh, well, I've always tried to look at women from different perspectives, different angles entirely from what other sees. Uh, when you look at, you know, uh, the characteristics of God himself, you know, God is loving, is forgivable, you know. And when you look at women at times, you look at their attributes, you know, things that made up women, you know, you find out that women have this similar you know, women are more forgivable, uh, more loving, you know, more passionate. And so that's the main reason why I decided to, you know, you know paint to pick women. I, I paint men too, but mostly, most of my subjects is female. And are they your friends? Yeah, well, most of the subjects I paint are my friends, sisters, even my wife, mother for me at times. So I even I have I, my kid too. It's part of the new model that I just recruited now. So mostly my friends and, you know, family members too. So these are the people that I use for my model. And do you work from life? No, most, most of the time I work from photograph. Uh, because one of the most important things is that uh, to conceive an idea is something that, you know, that requires a lot of thinking. And once I have an idea, I'll just pick up a sheet of paper, then try to put some things down. Then from the idea, I would look for a way to build it up. Then look for a perfect model that can interpret what I have in mind. Mm -hmm. So then I would look for anybody around me to take the picture. Then I, give her, I tell her what to do and give her the costume and how I want, you know, how I want her to convey a particular mood. Mm -hmm. Then from there, I take the picture, then I develop it into a painting. And there's kind of two distinct types of painting here. So you've got some that are in quite muted, sort of old master-like palettes, and some that are much more pop arty, bright colours. How do you choose which colour palette you're going to work with? Uh, uh, one of, like I said earlier, the Afro is associated with black community. And uh, in my painting, I always try to tell the black community to embrace their beauty, to embrace their color, you know. So mostly I try to, you know, to advocate, you know, for, for women also to, you know, to always maintain their natural beauty. So that's the reason why I decided to, you know, to create my palette in a dark or color, you know, to talk more about black people. And what about the bright ones and the ones that have words in uh, them? Well, the, the bright, I'm just trying to, when I use bright colours for my painting, I, or what I'm specifically saying is to, you know, I always try to talk about the future with the colours, not the present. The Afro has been something, you know, from the past, mm -hmm. you know, which people these days are trying to go into now. But mostly my colours are, you know, bright colour because I, I want to portray energy and also strength. This painting in her is, oh, was inspired by my grandmother. Uh, I remember before, before she died, 
she had a cancer. You know, this cancer has been with her for a very long time, not knowing that she had a cancer. She undergo uh, chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. When we took her to the hospital, the doctor said, uh, your grandma only has few days left. So, you know, I was saddened, you know, bitter in my heart that, ah, would, that, would this be the last time I'm going to see my grandmother? You know, and this mother we are talking about, she's very loving, accommodating, you know, prayerful. She has always been a source of inspiration to me when I look at her, when I look at the kind of life she lived. But the, the sad part of the story is that uh, she never lived long to see what is happening here in London today, you know. Like I was saying, uh, women are, I don't want to use the word that women are God, but you know, there will be a lot of criticism about it, but when I look at women at times, most of, you know, they have this attribute, you know, of God. So women are special, women are loving, forgivable. So this painting is, uh, specifically dedicated to my mother and also to create awareness for people living with cancer. Mm -hmm. You know, there is, cancer is not the end of everything. There's always hope. Do you work in series as well? Yeah, I work in series. So I know downstairs you've got a couple of series. Yes, and yet here also I have a couple of series at, the, at my back. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is that again working with that original idea and well, the, the, the idea behind the series at my back was actually inspired by the, the, the popular painting, Mona Lisa. Yeah, that's the, that's the painting that got me inspired. So the title of the painting behind me is Mona Lisa. Not Mona Lisa this time around. Omo, Omo means baby, uh -huh. a girl. You know, so Mona Lisa. So the, not Mona Lisa. So I'm just trying to, if you look at the painting closely, you could feel the, you know, the environment, uh, the colors mm -hmm. are more, you know, related to the popular Mona Lisa that everyone knows. So is it that you're developing an idea to the point where you feel that you've yes. explored it satisfactorily? Mm -hmm. yeah, and then once I'm satisfied, then I drop it and think That series is done. Yeah. Okay, but it's always hair that you work with. Yeah, all right. What well, presently now the series I'm working on presently is mainly the hair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have other series, you know, that I work on, but mainly I work on hair. Did you always know that you wanted to be an artist? That's a long story. Well, <laughs> I've, from uh, from um, my primary school level. I've always knew that I was going to become an artist, but there was a problem, there was a clause there. My father did never believe in me. You know, he wanted me to practice more professional work, like, you know, become a lawyer, a medical doctor, or, you know, an engineer. But then I started art from, you know, using papers, uh, can, and you know, I was creating it then, nobody was there, but even my mom was not, you know, maybe because they don't believe in what I was doing, maybe they don't believe, they don't have the ex this exposure, but then I was doing this art innocently. Mm -hmm. But I have always knew that I was going to, you know, become a professional artist, and since then, I've been doing it, and for once I've never regretted not being an artist. Uh, when I remember when my mom died, he, she died in my hand. And while I was growing up, my mom was always a lover of flower. She loves flower. She loves, you know. So when she died, I thought of what I could do to immortalize her. So I thought of flower. So by putting flower in my painting, I always dedicate each of my paintings to my mother. Do you consider your work to be specifically African art? Mm, well, yes. And why? Uh, well, because uh, I was born and brought up in Africa. I eat Africa food, drink Africa water. And, you know, uh, these are the things that made up, you know, who I am today. So, basically, my heart is African heart. <laughs>